The X mid 10s are designed to be very simple to pitch because the last thing you want to be doing when bad weather is rolling in is fiddling with a complicated tent. Still, there are some things to keep in mind for uh, the best possible pitch. So in this pitching guide, what we're going to do is take a quick look at the basic pitch and then we're going to go through that process in more detail to show some of the finer points. Then we'll look at troubleshooting some of the common issues and then a few other things. We'll look at how to beef it up for stormy weather and some of the variations that are possible like porch mode, a stargazer mode, a desert mode. Uh, we'll show you all of these things. The x mid is based around a simpler rectangle shape, which means it can be pitched with as few as four stakes. To set it up, start by staking out the rectangle base. I like to stake one end, pull out a third corner at 90 degrees, and then stake the fourth corner where it pulls tight. Then you can simply insert the two poles and extend them until the fly is tight. Unlike competing tents, there are no odd angles to estimate and no need to measure your pole lengths or other distances. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you pitch your X-Mid is to have the right equipment. So you're obviously you're going to need to have your tent and then you're going to need to have your two trekking poles or folding poles. Ideally they would be adjustable length. And then you're going to want to have the right stakes. So stakes are something where you do want to have the appropriate stakes for the conditions. When it's um, kind of regular soil, you can get away with more of a medium sized stake. If it's softer soils or if it's more high winds and extreme conditions, you're going to want a larger stake. And other times, um, if it's um, really firm soils or gentler conditions, you can get away with a lighter stake, or if it's a less important staking point. It's the four corners are gonna tend to need bigger stakes, and just adding extra stakes around the base could use smaller ones. So one thing you wanna keep in mind is where you're gonna be sleeping. With the X-Mid, the floor is on a diagonal relative to the fly, so the floor is rotated a bit to the left, which means when you throw out the fly, you wanna twist it a bit to the right so that your floor is where you want to be. So when you've got the tent laid out, the next thing you're going to want to do is stake one of the ends of the fly. And uh, when you do this, something that can be handy is to just partially insert the stakes because you could end up needing to move them later. So there's not a lot of point to spending a lot of time hammering it in around rocks and things like that if you're just gonna end up needing to move it. So I like to quickly just put them in halfway and then when all the positions are good, then I come around and put them in the rest of the way. Once you've got the two corners at one end staked out, you're gonna to need to stake out the other end so that the base of the fly is an accurate rectangle. To get an accurate rectangle, there are two methods. The first method is you can pull out that third corner and eyeball 90 degrees. Then you can just pull the fourth corner out where it pulls tight. The second method is to fold the tent to find the center. When you fold the two corners to the center, you can find the point where both of those edge lines pull tight. That's going to be the center line of the tent. Then, because you folded the tent, you can also find the middle of that end side and you can place it right along that center line and then just unfold the two sides of the tent to put those corners in the right positions. The goal when you're putting in the stakes at the corners is to get those stakes at about 45 degrees so they're pulling on both sides of the tent. If the stake is way off to one side, you won't have even tension on both sides. Once you've got all four corners staked out and you've got the stakes fully inserted, then the last thing you can do for the base is to tighten it up. It's really important to get the base tension tight because what that's gonna do is limit the pulls to the correct height. If the base is too loose, your pulls will overextend and you'll end up with loose sides on your tent. So with the base properly staked out in a rectangle that's accurate and tight, the next step is to add the poles. How you add the poles is gonna differ for some of our different tent models. The regular and the solid tents are gonna pitch with the pole tip up, whereas the Pro Series tents are gonna pitch with the handle up. Either way, to add the pole, what you can do is open the door of the tent, and then you're gonna insert the pole in whatever orientation is applicable for your model. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you extend it firmly. It's important to extend the pole firmly so that the fly is tight. Then you can repeat this at the other side. So now the tent should be up and it should be looking good if you follow the three keys for a good pitch, which are having that base in an accurate rectangle, tensioning it up fairly tight before you add those poles, and then extending the poles quite firmly. 
So with your tent pitch, something I like to do is add a stake at any door that you're gonna be using. This is gonna do three things. It's gonna make the zippers operate one-handed on the fly. It's gonna hold the small side of the door in place when the door's open. And the other thing you can do with this is if you put it in at an angle like this, then it's gonna take that tension off the base so that there's less tension on the zippers. It's a little easier on your zipper and just a little bit easier to operate them. If you do need to add the inner, what you need to do is lay it out on the diagonal between the two poles and then clip it to the four corners and the two peaks. There's also connections at the bottom of the poles that can help the floor lay a bit nicer. And on some of the models, there are further clips along the top of the door to pull it wider for a little bit more space. So when you add the inner tent, you can clip it to the four corners either while you're inside the tent or you can go around the tent and do it from the outside. When you are clipping to the inside corners of the fly, there are two ways that you can do it. You can clip either to the D-rings where it's not gonna come undone when you're taking apart the tent between pitches, but it also is harder to do up and undo. Or you can clip it to the grow grain here where it's much easier to clip it and to unclip it, but it might come apart, not when you're using the tent, but when, you're, when you have it packed up. When it comes time to pack up the tent, if you have one of our double wall models, you can remove the inner or you can leave it clipped inside for next time. If the fly's wet from rain or condensation, it's nice to remove the inner so you can keep it dry. But if everything's pretty dry already, it's nice to pack it up all together and that way it's just gonna be simpler to pitch next time. There are two common issues that people have with their X-Mid pitch. We're gonna look at both of those issues, what causes them and how you can fix them. So the first issue that people have is they get loose sides on their tent. It's really loose like this. And what they do is they say, well, I just got to tighten up the base. They try to tighten it at the corner, but the corner seam is actually quite tight. So you can't actually just fix this by tightening up the corners. So what's caused this is that the base of the tent wasn't tight when you added the poles. What happened then is the poles extended too tall and it's sucking the sides in. You can't tighten it up later because the poles are too tall. So the solution is to lower the poles by a few inches to take that tension off. Then you can tighten the base and then you can re-extend the poles to wherever they pull tight. So the second type of troubleshooting issue you might have is that there's somewhere on the fly is loose. It could be a loose ridge line and loose sides where you feel like you've done everything right. You think you staked out the rectangle in a pretty accurate square, you tightened it up, you extended the poles firmly, and then you're getting a loose area on the fly. It's typically gonna be a loose ridge line or loose sides. So for a lot of you that just wanna know how to fix this, you can just skip ahead. But for the, for the geeks that really want to understand this, I'll explain what's happening quickly. So typically what's happening is when you stake the tent, it actually isn't a rectangle. It's skewed to one side or to the other, and that's making the fly tight across one diagonal, but loose on the other. That can happen from a skew, or it can happen because of elevation where one corner is higher and lower. So when you extended the poles, you extend them firmly, that pole would have been stopped by something where there are really two lines across the peak. There's this line going over the peak here, and there's this other crossing line here. Ideally, both of those would pull tight at the same time and the whole tent would be tight. But if the tent skewed one way, one of those is gonna pull tight before the other. And as a result of that, you're either gonna get a loose ridge line or loose sides, where the ridge line's tight, but the sides are being sucked in. So to fix this, basically what we need to do is just adjust the base back into square to do that, we're gonna tighten two of the corners and loosen two of the corners to morph that base back.
The XMID isn't a four season tent for extreme conditions, but it is a very capable three season tent that does quite well in stormy weather thanks to a number of attributes like the fly first pitch. It's a simple pitch, so it's not a lot to fiddle with. It also is wind stable, which means there's no steps to the process where the whole thing's gonna tip over when it's half erected. And it's got a number of options for reinforcing the pitch, peak guy outs, side guy outs, stakes. So we're gonna show some of those things, how you can use them to reinforce the pitch for tough conditions. So when you're gonna pitch it in stormy weather, the first thing you wanna make sure of is that your core pitch is good, which really means that it's tight all over. So you wanna be picky about the tension on your core pitch. If your tent is loose around the bottom, around the sides, you're gonna to wanna to lower those peaks, tighten up the base more, and then re-extend the peaks. And then if your fly has some issues like we've talked about, you're gonna to wanna to correct that. So the ridge line's tight. Basically the tent is tight all over. That's gonna give you the best performance. It's gonna be the most stable in high wind conditions. Another thing you wanna keep in mind is potentially pitching the tent lower in high winds. So there are a number of cords around the base and those cords act like an extension of the fly, where if you, if you have pitched it with quite long cords, the whole tent's gonna have lifted higher. Whereas if you have staked it out with short cords, the whole thing's gonna be hunkered down to the ground. This is something you can't easily change after the tent's up. So when you're staking it out, set those cords shorter and it'll give you that lower pitch that's gonna be better in high winds. A third thing to consider is that some of our tent models have had a simpler shock cord at the doors instead of more of a regular guy line. So if you do have a model with shock cord and you're planning on using it in pretty extreme conditions or stormy conditions, then I would look to replace that shock cord with a static cord. With the core pitch looking good, the next step is to add the peak guy lines. If your tent doesn't have these, you can add them at the peaks. What you're gonna to wanna to do with these guy lines is stake them out approximately along the ridge line. The guy line is gonna be stronger the further away from the tent you stake it, but it's also gonna be a bit more of a hassle um, for potentially tripping over. So in extreme conditions, you could use a longer line, but most of the time you're fine with a guy line around six feet or 1.5 meters. Another nice thing to add in stormy conditions are the side panel guy lines. These are guy lines that will reduce side panel deflection and the best way to deploy these is to put them, pull them down at an angle that is approximately the same slope as the roof. So you're basically pulling directly away from the peak to anchor the peak on that side. When you do this on both sides of the tent, then it really stabilizes the sides of the tent. Lastly, what you can do is add more stakes around the base of the tent. There's guy out points for up to 12 stakes around the base. You can add stakes at all of those if you feel like it's needed. You can even, in extreme conditions, you can go a step further and you can modify these lines to add even multiple stakes at one point, although that really shouldn't be needed. The XMIT is a highly versatile shelter, so there are a lot of different pitch variations you can do to adapt it for different conditions. The first of those is the full open sides mode. So here what you're gonna do is for the small side of the door, instead of staking that down, you can actually fold it around the corner and tie it to the stake point on the end. That fully opens up the side of the tent, gives you more views, more ventilation, and allows you to do a four stake pitch without having the small sides of the doors just kind of hanging in the doorways. If you wanna open up your XMIT even more for those beautiful summer days, what you can do is roll back the fly almost the entire way. To do this, what you do is you start by disconnecting the inner at one of the corners and staking down the inner. You can use the same stake as was used for the fly corner. Then you can disconnect the fly at that corner and starting from the door, just roll the fly back all the way around the tent, all the way to the far corner. This completely opens up one side of the tent. You can also fold that small side of the door around the corner to fully open that side and you can repeat the same thing on the other side of the tent to have essentially 360 uh, views outside of the tent while it's also easy to roll the fly right back to shelter things up again. Another neat mode you can do with your XMID tent is desert mode. This is where you roll up the corners of the tent in a zipperless mode instead of using the zippers. It's ideal for the deserts because those are sandy environments that can be quite hard on the zippers if you're using them regularly. 
With this mode, what you're gonna do is you're gonna deploy the peak guy line at one of the corners. It's best to stake it down right by the corner of the tent and then clip the inner tent to the base of that guy line. Like this, you can unstake the corner of the fly, roll it up and tie it securely at the peak. When the weather's not so nice, maybe it's overcast, drizzly, rainy, something you can do to make it more livable is called porch mode. In this mode, what you're gonna do is open up the large door of the fly and prop it open with an extra pole or a stick into a porch, which gives a protected living space beside the inner tent. To do this, what you need to do is take some guy line and tie it to the base of the door. Then add a small loop right below that for your pole tip Extend your pole until the height's about right, and then stake down that guy line to hold everything in position. The fly will still give enough coverage on the inner that it will keep the inner protected from falling rain. Another variation that can be helpful is the skinny pitch mode, where you're collapsing one or both of the vestibules to fit into a campsite that otherwise might not be quite large enough for your tent. There are a bunch of ways to do this, and I'm gonna make an extra supplemental video to show you some of these different options, but quickly, Typically what you're going to be doing is adding an extra stake point on the end wall and connecting the inner and the fly to this point. That makes sure the inner floor is fully secured at the four corners. Also deploy the peak guy line to hold the fly peak in position and then you can unstake both the inner and the fly from the corner of the tent. Another way you can use your X-Mid tent is to use it just with the fly only. With the fly only, you just simply don't add the inner tent and you can save some weight if it's outside bug season. You can sleep in the same position as normal between the two poles, but you can also shift the pole bottoms towards the center line of the shelter and sleep two people in the tent in fly only mode. Pitching just the inner tent can be nice in hot conditions or if it's really nice weather and you wanna save weight and leave the fly at home. To do that, what you're gonna do is stake down the four corners of the inner keeping in mind it does have a parallelogram shape and not a true rectangle. Once you've got the corner staked down, you can either use our Stargazer kit that clips to the inner peaks and makes everything really simple with grommets for adding your pull tips and tensioners, or you can rig up something yourself with knots. Either way, what you're gonna do is connect your poles at the two peaks, extend them until the inner's tight, and then the important thing is to stake out those lines at the same angle as the ridge line. If you have the guy line staked out at an angle, it's gonna twist the inner tent and cause you to lose space inside. <music>